Uh, this is um, my friend and fellow poet called Steve. Uh, if I could uh, politely request that those of you who have mobile phones, uh, if, you, if you don't want to switch them up, to at least put them on side. That would be a great respect to us because we want to share, as writers, our feelings about what's happened in Pakistan. I, like many people in the audience, have family directly affected by the floods. This is something which is a tragedy for Pakistan, and it's a tragedy for the world because of the slowness of the response to this, as we've been told already, is the greatest calamity within the last decade at least. And we still do not know how great a catastrophe this is. We don't know. Now tonight, we as writers are going to present some of our words to you. And inshallah it may inspire some people in the audience to share some of your words with us. So Steve's going to open with a poem. Then I'm going to read one, and I'll repeat it. And then Steve will finish with a final poem, which is almost a prayer. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, this poem is called After the Rains, and it's taken from the many news articles that I've been reading over the past few weeks. It's hard to believe that the distance from the tip to the heel of my hand on a map, that land the size of England was submerged. It's hard to believe that between forefinger and thumb on my TV screen is the distance between the spread tables here and flies feeding off the eyes of orphans there. It's hard to figure, though it's only a seven hour flight from here, desperate families scrap for snatched fistfuls of rice. It's hard to believe of towns becoming lakes overnight, mosques screaming run for your lives, floodwaters leaving only the tips of rice stalks where land used to be. It's hard to consider in this day of an age of women going into labour in public places, scabies, cholera and graveyard villages filled with filth, infection and dehydration. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. It's hard to comprehend the naked flags of tents, children prostrate like dead beasts, dust in roadsides like silted sandbags. It's impossible to consider leaving your blind mother behind. The rain has gone now. All that's left is the blazing sunset in some flooded plains. The rain has gone now. Though replaced by heat and humidity, all humanity needs me naked to the waist. It's hard to believe 20 million people displaced, the population of New York State, 121,000 tents, 200,000 head of cattle, and 1,600 men, women, children, some family members estimated dead. 17 million acres of ruined arable land, 5,000 miles of roads and rail, Bedling and infrastructure still shifting the rubble from Ramadan 2005. It's hard to believe that from the tip to the heel of my hand on a map, that land the size of this land was flooded in a flash. It's hard to believe the magnitude of all this, but it's true. And you need to know you need to know that the window for the next harvest is closing fast. Thank you. Dear Silence, for the one who hears my words, I am a nameless, faceless voice, gurgling from the deep, weeping, on the fringe of your world, waiting in water, waiting for land to come. 
I am speaking for a nation that has nothing left, not even breath. And each stroke of my pen is a spade gouging a hole to welcome the dead. For the one who hears these words, all I see is cold brown water that cloaks the land from edge to end like a dirty sheep shrouding a corpse. I have become a dream of children's voices lifting the light of the rustle of leaves, the hum of life. If you hear these words, pray for a day when the sun will blaze fierce on our backs so we can tug out our children from the mud and lay them snug into the earth. Perhaps they will be nameless, but never faceless. And they will be home, they will be home again. Be a silence for the one who hears my words. I am a nameless, faceless voice gurgling from the deep, weeping on the fringe of your world, waiting in water, waiting for land to come. I am speaking from a nation that has nothing left, not even breath, and each stroke of my pen is a spade gouging a hole to welcome the dead. For the one who hears these words, all I see is cold brown water that cloaks the land from edge to end like a dirty sheet shrouding a corpse. I have become a dream of children's voices lifting the light of the rustle of leaves, the hum of life. If you hear these words, pray for a day when the sun will blaze fierce on our backs so we can tug out our children from the mud and lay them snug into the earth. Perhaps, perhaps, they will be nameless, but never faceless. And they will be home. They will be home again. Food's arriving. I better be quick. Um, this is called Rayan. Before you died, I kissed your tiny forehead, wished that life might pour from me into you. So maybe you would one day cradle me in the crook of your arm. Well, I told you of the stave of kisses you'd help me to sing. But we will never know, as the sky covers over with cloud, and the seas fill from unforgiving rivers. For now, your cold lips are at myself, the word, the breath, this prayer within. Thank you very much.